Hello, this is Miss Owens, and today I'm going to review with you how to complete monohybrid genetic crosses. The first step is choosing what letter you are going to use to represent the dominant and recessive alleles. Usually you pick the letter that represents the dominant allele or trait. For example, if green is dominant to yellow, we would use the letter G. If purple is dominant to white, we would use the letter P to code for the purple trait, which is dominant. If black is dominant to brown, we would use the letter B. The second step in doing a monohybrid cross is determining the genotypes of the parents. This is a very important step. If you do not do this step correctly, all of your answers will be wrong. So vocab is vitally important in this step you need to make sure you understand thoroughly what the following words mean. To begin with, homozygous dominant would be represented by two capital letters, such as big A, big A, because dominant refers to capital letters and homozygous means the same. Heterozygous means you inherit one dominant allele and one recessive allele, so you would have the capital A, lowercase a symbol because hetero means different. Homozygous recessive genotype would be represented by little a, little a, because homo means the same and recessive is represented with a lowercase letter. Pure means the same as homozygous. So if a trait were pure, you would know it's either capital A, capital A, or lowercase a lowercase a. You would need more information before you could determine what particular genotype it was. Hybrid means the same as heterozygous. So it would be represented with a capital A and a lowercase a. These vocab words are very very important. Make sure you know them thoroughly. So, for example, if you knew red flowers are dominant to white flowers and you were given the following phenotypes, you would need to come up with the appropriate genotype. So, for a red flower, we would use the letter R because red is dominant to white. So, we would know a red flower would be big R, big R, or big R, little r. You could not know from just being given the information that the flower is red, whether it's homozygous dominant or heterozygous for the trait. A white flower would be lowercase r, lowercase r, because that is the recessive trait. A pure red flower would be capital R, capital R. You know it has to be red, so it has to have one capital R, and because it says pure, you know that means the same as homozygous, so it would be capital R, capital R. Hybrid means the same as heterozygous, so you would have big R, little r. Homozygous red flower, again, means the same as pure red flower. You would have capital R, capital R genotype, and a recessive flower would have lowercase r, lowercase r. Oops. Moving on to the specific problem. Let's say you are given a problem about plea plants, where green pods are dominant to yellow pods and you are told that a plant that is heterozygous for green pods is crossed with a plant that has yellow pods. Well, heterozygous green, I would use the letter G because green is the dominant trait. And if they are heterozygous, I mean hetero means different, so that would be big G, little g. And yellow pods is a recessive trait, so they would be little g, little g. Once you have determined the genotypes of the parents and you have double and triple checked that you have turned the words they give you into the correct genotypes because remember we talked about how if you get the letters wrong you get the whole problem wrong. You then move on to setting up the Punnett square. To set up the Punnett square you just put one parent on each side. It does not matter which parent goes on which side you will get the same results. You just need to make sure you keep the two letters that represent each genotype of the parent together. The next step, step four, is completing the Punnett square. 
So once you have it set up, you then complete it by bringing the letters over and down in each box. So I would have big G, little g, big G, little g, little g, little g, little g, little g. Remember, you always like writing a sentence. The capital letter goes first. You would never want to write it lowercase letter and then capital letter. Once you have filled in your Punnett square, then the next step is determining the genotype and phenotype of the offspring. Once again, vocab is important. You have to understand what these two different words mean. Genotype stands for the alleles, the letters. whether they are G, G, big G, little G, or little G, little G. Phenotype stands for physical appearance. It's a description. Phenotype starts with P, physical appearance starts with the letter P. So once you've done the cross, then you need to determine the phenotypes and genotypes of the offspring. To determine the genotypes, oops, of the offspring, I look at the different allele combinations. And I would notice that I have two big G, little g, two little g little g. Okay, some teachers may write it two out of four big g little g, two out of four little g little g, or some might, might write it in ratio form zero homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and two homozygous recessive. For the phenotype, I then determine the physical appearance of the offspring. If they have a capital letter, that represents a dominant allele. So I know they have the dominant trait, D for dominant. So green is dominant to yellow, so I know that I have two green and two yellow. Some teachers may write that two out of four green, two out of four yellow, or some might write it in ratio form with two having the dominant trait and two having the recessive trait. I hope that listening to this helped you out. Have a great day.